Christmas Eve today. <laughs> Coach, how are you doing? Are you sharing the same level of excitement that most of the players are? I think so. I think any time for myself, I go back to 78 when I first went to a training camp and it was exciting the first day of physicals. You're a little bit nervous and uh, not knowing what to expect. And I think I feel the same way as uh, all the players today. But uh, at the same time, I think it's a good nervousness and it's a it's a good excitement of a, uh, of a new season starting and uh, looking forward to the opportunity that presents. You're almost 39-year-old captain coming off surgery this summer. It says he's he's ready to go and looks like he's in pretty good shape. How does how does that make you feel? What's the well, that's good news. Season? That's real good news for all of us. I think if Daniel can come and play uh, our team every day, he's a, he's still a National Hockey League player with great leadership abilities, and the players have a ton of respect for him. The league has a ton of respect for him, and uh, that just makes us a way better team uh, right away if he's going to come and play. If I'm a young player and I come to you tomorrow and say, I, I want to make this team this year, Coach, what do I have to do? What do you tell that player? I said, you better go fast. Well, I think the key position for us going into this season are the second line center position and uh, the, the number of defensemen that we have. And we have some good young defensemen. That competition is going to be healthy uh, because they're good players. Uh, and the same thing with the second line center position. That's going to be on a, a nightly, daily basis for the people that are competing for it. But that's healthy. I think that's good for the organization that we have the quality of players that there's going to be competition for that job. Uh, other than those jobs, there's, there's also competition within the team for ice time and who's playing on the power play, who's going to kill penalties, who gets to play four on four, who's good in the face-off circle. So within the team, there's still going to be a healthy competition for uh, the opportunity in the ice time. In regards to that second line center spot, is there a particular type of player you like to have there? If you look at the cost, but he's a small, skilled guy, and Zabinja is a big guy, so, and then there's Peter Regan, like, is there something you, that you look for in particular? Then? Well, the, the big thing for me is speed. We've got to play fast. But you also have to be able to play the game. And I think the important thing for DaCosta and Zibanejad is, is who's ready to play in the National Hockey League on a daily basis. It's not, it's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's a tough grind, and it's a, you have to be ready for it both physically and mentally. And uh, the game is played real fast. So they, they both bring uh, elements that are a little bit different from one another. And uh, who's ever the most prepared to play uh, at this level is going to be the guy that wins the opportunity. Couple of the, to Brian just said there's a couple of tweaks that guys maybe you're going to be careful with here at the beginning. I think yeah, that's not uncommon with everybody. When you're training as hard as these guys train to get to the fitness level that we're demanding, that we're, that there's going to be some tweaks and alleys and bruises along the way, just like anything. So we're going to be monitored of that on a daily basis. And if they don't need to not have them on the ice, we'll have them on the ice. We're going to err on the side of being careful here at day one. Are there any guys we, we know won't be on the ice the first couple uh, of days? Not right now. Every, right now, everything is ready to go for tomorrow. Were you, were you suggesting that one of Sedan and Jad and Costa <coughs> will, will be here when the camp breaks? Do no, I'm just saying they're, they're, they're the two guys that are in the competition for that job. And neither one of them might not be ready, so who's to say? But we know that uh, they both had real good the three games in Oshawa. They both played real well and both showed real well. We're going to continue to monitor them through the exhibition season, and if uh, one of them is ready, <coughs> we'll give them an opportunity. If they're not, then we'll have to do something else. In your mind, is there a, a set number, a limit number, if the starting number one goalie <coughs> should not play more in like, some games? Or Craig Anderson's type of goalie you like to play a lot? Is it, is it like green card, green light for him to play as much as he wants? Well, historically, he plays that way. Right now, he's the number one goalie until somebody comes in and, and, and takes that position from him. So we can anticipate that he's going to play uh, the game that he needs to play to get ready for the season and entering the season. You're not opposed to running with a guy for a long time. Patrick Willeen played a lot of games for you one year, did he not? Well, he played lots of games for me. I, I, who's ever ready to play and, and gives the team an opportunity to win, that's who's going to play. And right now, as I start the season, that would be Craig Anderson. What's a realistic expectation in your mind of how competitive this team can be? Well, realistic, we expect to be competitive every day. And, uh, but we're here today getting ready for physicals tomorrow.
more. We're going to try to get better every day. Um, but our competition level is something that we control as a team and as a group, and we expect that that level is going to be high and that we'll be competitive. Did you take the approach even from early days going in that this is a team that can make the playoffs, that can rebound? Uh, we're taking the step of building a foundation for the future of this team, and that, that might not be this year, it could be next year. And tomorrow we're going to start going A, B, C, so it's going to be a slow process, but it is a process of winning. I know where we want to go. I have a lot of people here that want to go to the same place, and uh, but we're also going to be patient and do it the right way and make sure we build it one step at a time and take it one step at a time. And when we get there, we're all going to enjoy it. It's been a tough summer for the NHL, uh, for hockey in general. Um, do you find yourself talking more to the guys about their state of mind and how they're approaching things and tough guys in particular? Yeah. Uh, we haven't, we're still trying to get our head around a lot of that ourselves. I mean, with the, the, all the incidents that have happened in the plane crash and, and that, there, there's been a lot going on, as you've said, so we all have to kind of sort through a little bit. And uh, once we get down to some numbers, we're going to have an opportunity to talk to people about things a little bit more. But right now, with the, the number of people we have here, it's Brad Kaminsky, you know, tomorrow, I guess, you, you coach with him for four years in Detroit. How tough is it? Uh, oh, it's hard uh, for Brad and his family, especially his son leaving his fourth team, and you know, he doesn't have his dad anymore, so that's a hard day. He's got a daughter that's 20 uh, in, in nursing school, so that's hard for them and for his wife, Maureen, and for his, uh, him and his dad, Byron, are real close, and his brother are close. So it's a sad day for their family, and I feel for them. And uh, as much as you'd like to be there, uh, life goes on, and um, you know, Brad's a good friend of mine. 